Ephesians 6, verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you might be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And I want to teach a little bit on this armor that God has provided for us. And, uh, you know, uh, I looked that word armor up, which I know we're, we probably know what it means, but i just like to have a few definitions. And the armor, it says, is an implement or utensil or tool, literally or figuratively, especially, especially offensive for war. So, see, we are in a battle here. And, you know, a lot of times we, uh, we come in contact with certain individuals in our life and we, we think, boy, they don't like us. Well, really, that problem is a lot deeper than what we suspect. You know, it's not necessarily, according to this here, is we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. See, this is a spiritual battle that we're in. You will never win a spiritual battle fighting it in the flesh. You'll have to fight it in the Spirit. And so he gives us things here. And there's two words that he uses repetitively in this text. One of the words he uses is withstand. See, that word withstand, it ain't the same as to stand. The word withstand means to oppose, resist, to stand against. But the word stand means to abide. That means, you know, you're, you're going to stick with it. But sometimes you're going to have to withstand. If you're a child of God, you're going to have to withstand some stuff. And you know, a lot of people say, well, this is why I stand for the King James. I, I, that's good. I do too. But you know, to do that, you're going to have to withstand the opposition of that. Because do you realize that we're a minority? If you Google, and I don't, I don't, couldn't tell you how to do it. Uh, talk to my wife if you want to know how to Google. But if you did and you said, I want a Baptist church in this local area, you could probably get dozens. But if you put on that same scripture script that you want, uh, King James only, you would probably take that dozen or two dozen and probably turn it down to less than probably five, I would imagine. So we're, you know, we're not withstanding. Now, the thing that we need to realize is what God has provided for us, this armor, and we know it's a spiritual armor, but here's how I think this happened. I think that Paul, writing this down, was probably in jail, and he was looking at these soldiers, and he took every opportunity to take whatever opposition that he faced, whatever trial he faced, and turn it to something spiritual. And he got to looking at those Roman soldiers, and he, he applied that to us as children of God. And so he's trying to tell us, you know, how powerful this... See, the reason why our armor will make us stand and withstand is because of the resources that we get it from. Look what he says in the opening of this. He says, finally, my brother... He's saying, this is the last thing. I want you to get, get this in your heart. Be strong in the Lord. If you start trying to live a Christian life, if you, but you can't do it. It's impossible. You can't do anything for God in your own strength. Your resource is God. You have to depend on that resource. 
You know, just like your automobile, there's two things that your car ain't going to last very long without. It ain't going to last long without oil. <laughs> you, you run it out of oil, you're going to be sitting inside the road. You run it out of water, it's got to have that fluid flowing in it. That's a resource that keeps that engine running. And you know what keeps you going? If you start trying to get ahead of God, and I want to just say this, if you have trouble, and if you're a child of God, you're going to have them. You don't even have to be a child of God. The Bible says this, a man born of woman is a few days of full of trouble. And I'm living proof of that. And you are too. You'll have problems. You know, no matter what. Being a child of God does not exempt you. It's almost like you step out into one of those, uh, uh, those rings. They got those bulls. And you put a big red circle on your stomach. You're targeted. The devil's going to make sure. But you know what? You do have an armor that can withstand. You say, I can't take no more. Yes, you can. Because God has promised us He would never put more on us than we could bear. Uh, you see, what that is, is the devil, he's trying to tell you, throw in the towel. Because, see, it ain't you that he's necessarily interested in. It's your children. Hmm? See, the, we've lost a whole generation because people said, well, I just can't go on. And that's not the Word of God. The Bible says I can. See, so we have a resource that makes it very powerful. There's nothing, can you think of anything that could overcome God? Anybody that could whip God? Anybody that could def defeat God? There's not even, you can't even think of nothing. There's nothing. The Bible says you can't even think of something that God can't do. Hmm? Do you know what, Brother Ray? You could say, well, i tell you what I'd like. I'd like to see a million people get saved today. But you know what? You don't believe that. But if you could believe it, God can do it. It ain't nothing to Him. You know why? Everybody in here that's saved, He saved them the same way. And probably some cases in here, if people would have looked at them and said, there's an impossibility, they'll never get saved. They'll never be in church. That's not God. That ain't the God we serve. Why? Because this God is powerful. He's very powerful. I don't know how He takes a, a, a person's heart who's as black as a night and can make them love, love God and, and change their ways. I, I, I can't understand it, but I know He does it. He did it for me. See, that's our armor's resource. But you see, the raiment itself is it's kind of like an insurance policy. You know, you can buy a car and you can get full coverage. That's probably the good thing if you buy a new car. They make you buy full coverage. But, you know, you can get liability. And you're going to be in trouble when you have a wreck. See, God's coverage here, every aspect of your body is going to be covered. Did you see he, he tells us about the helmet? He tells us about uh, your loins being gird, uh, a girdle to bat with the truth. He says the breastplate of righteousness. You know, the breastplate, that's, the, that's your heart. See, uh, you know, if a person's heart is, is always uh, thinking dark things and always thinking there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with a person who's supposedly be saved and they continue on. I, I, don't, I don't believe a person can get saved and never no changes. I don't believe that. I believe that when a person gets saved, you may not ever be uh, D.L. Moody. God ain't called you to be D.L. Moody. God's called you to be you. If you're a housewife and you just raise up godly children and that's what God wants you to do, you're a success. You don't have to be that all that stuff. But see, this, this raiment is so powerful. Now look, look at what he says it does in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's things that you can see. I can see you all. That's flesh and blood. But there's, there's a force, there's a power that is out here in this world that's demonic. I can't see that. That's spiritual. I can't see all... If I, I, I personally now, you don't have to believe this. I personally believe that there's demons just, uh, just everywhere, all around, waiting for opportunities. One thing I do believe about demons, they possess human beings. Uh, 
they possess human beings. And I think another thing about these demons, we have watched too much television and let Hollywood distort what their activities are. We think that they're uh, somebody who's running around uh, like on Friday the 13th, which I've never, I've just seen the, uh, I don't like movies like that. Uh, that's just evil. But they're out trying to chop people up. That could be, but it's other things. I think that our government is full of demons. That's my personal opinion. You don't have to believe that. The reason I believe that is because they do too much to try to tear down good things and godly things. See, look at this, the reach of our armor. Look what it says. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against ru the rulers of darkness of this world. That means that we have leadership that's ungodly. I want to say this. You have to be wicked. You have to be wicked to think it's all right to have an abortion. To kill the unborn is one of the most tr tragic, evil things that's ever took place in America, and we're doing it. Doing, and they think they've won some kind of a big deal because they've, done, they've reversed all of this, and they're still fighting in court. Each state now is they're trying to fight it out in the court systems. You know what they're trying to do? Evil rulers are still trying to. That, you know, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you realize this, but it is the truth. Uh, our government wants to uh, try to have population control. That's what they're trying to do. That's what all this COVID stuff and all that crazy stuff's about. It's controlling uh, the population. See, I tell you how you can control the population. Get right with God. Let God, He would bless us then, no matter how big we got, He'd, he'd bless. I'm just saying, folks, he talks about this, this armor being powerful. You know, when, when you have full coverage, I mean, there's no place that an arrow can get through. And you say, well, you know, I just don't think that's your problem. That's your problem. You have to have, uh, you have, to have confidence when you say, well, I, I can't make another step. Well, that's not true. Because God said, I'll be with you. How, how could you get away from somebody who says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee? And, if you, if, and if, you, if you read that backwards, it says the same thing. You, can't, you can go on. Because the Bible says, I can do all things. My wife, she is. If she ain't worrying, she's thinking about something I can worry about. She, uh, and she's, my daughter is the same way. I said, y'all, we, we ain't even got no news yet. Wait till the news comes. Right? I mean, I'm just saying. I, I, I told my daughter, she, boy, she just worries about her kids. I, I understand it. I, I get it. But, you know, don't wait till you get the news. Then worry. Don't worry and then get the news. Because, you know, half this is the truth, Brother Ray. Half the junk we worry about never comes to happen. And you know what happens? We, we fret and we die 10 years younger because we've worried ourselves. We've got ulcers and everything. But you know what? The Bible is true. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You say, I can't, I can't do it. That's a, you're lying to yourself. Because the Bible is always true. This is a king. This is the words that God has given us. I can, Brother Clint, I can do all things. I can make it. You know why? Because he said I could. He said, I'll go with you. Who would I want with me? But I want Brother Ray or I want Jesus. I hope Brother Ray goes with me, but I want Jesus with me. Amen? Because this armor that I have is powerful. Now, look at, look at the next thing that he says in verse 11. He said, put on, put on. Now, these Roman soldiers... And we have people that's been in the army forces and stuff, and they know 
What's the sense to have a uniform if you don't put it on? <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know? Second thing he tells us, he says, put on the whole armor of God. You know, a lot of people, you know, you go out there and you don't, it, wouldn't it be ridiculous to go out into a war and not take your pistol? You're probably not going to make it back home. Uh, I had a lady one time, she was anti-guns, and I've never been that way. And she said, I can't believe you being a Christian would have a gun. Would you shoot somebody if they come in your house? I said, don't, stone dead. I said, the next person they'd be seeing, I don't know, wherever they're going, that's where they, who they'd be seeing. She said, well, I can't believe that. She said, won't you take... Won't you take this pepper spray? I said, well, if they hit her with pepper spray, I'll do it. But if they don't, I'm shooting them with my 12 gauge. First of all, you shouldn't break in. Huh? If you want, all you got to do is knock, I'll let you in. He said, put it on. You know, now, the armor he's talking about, first of all, it's a spiritual armor. It's not a literal armor, but it still is literal as we can make it because he says put it on now you know here's what I'm finding a lot of people seem to be putting this armor on and go to bed no that's you put your pajamas on to go to bed <laughs> you don't put your armor on and go to bed we're in a fight here man you know uh, <laughs> you know uh, you got to stay on watch he said, now look what he says, that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now that word wiles means a trick, practice for ensnaring. Now you may not know this. I'm going to give you, those of you that are married, let me give you a little hint here. On your way to church, watch what you say to your spouse. Real quiet there. Now here's what happens, Brother Don. She can say anything, anytime, but on the way to church, she'll say something, and it just gets under your skin. And before you know it, you two are out by the ditch line. Huh? You said that don't happen. <laughs> Evidently, you ain't married. Or you're, so, you're too old to fight. See, I've got to the place where I watch what I say when we on Sunday mornings. Because she'll misunderstand what I'm saying. Because that's a trick of the devil. Not, not she ain't the devil. No, sir. She's, she's sweet. But the devil will make her... Well, I can't believe he said that this morning. Hmm? But see, you have to watch what you say. Because the devil... on your, she, You know why? Because here's what... Here, here's, let me tell you how, how sensitive this thing is with God. The devil knows if he can get you to... Grumping on the way to church, you'll run it for everybody. And that's all he cares about. <laughs> that's a trick that the devil uses. See, because you say, well, <laughs> me and my wife, bless her heart, she, she, she's got to where she just knows how to deal with me and just don't say nothing. You know, I try to have patience to Job. I honestly do. But there comes a point, Brother Ray, when my patience, like a bird, flies out the window. We don't fight and scratch. We just accept that's how it is. <laughs> I'm just being honest, you know. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is that this battle we're in, if you think that you, with this right here, going to get victory, ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. See, that's why we have an attitude in the church as a whole. God understands me missing church regularly. He does understand. Why don't it mean more to you? Huh? Huh? Because you as a part of the body is very important. It's a spiritual fight. It's, it's, it, I'm telling you, the... When the devil steps in the ring, he's got his gloves on all the time. He ain't never taking them off. If you think he's going to lay down, you, you, don't, you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know who you're dealing with. This guy here, he's, 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 he's got so much nerve that he even 
tried to get Jesus to sin. This guy has got some backbone. And if you are no match, and I am no match for him. See, it's a spiritual that you have to, you have to realize, you know, <clears throat> I've met people in my life, very few of them, that I, I'm going to be honest with you, I couldn't stand to be around them. They were so hard to deal with. But you know what? There was a source behind them, and it's the devil. People, I'm going to tell you something, people that are lost are unreasonable. And the only way that people can get along with you, it's not because you're such a sweet person. It's because of that sweet Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. Now, this armor has to be put on his spiritual, but this armor will strengthen you. You know, <clears throat> like I said before, if you face an enemy and that enemy's got some kind of handgun and you're sitting there and all you got's a stick, you're not going to feel like I'm going to be successful here. You know, but if you've got a gun and it's bigger than his, you're thinking, I might have a chance here. Right? We've got something that's this armor that this armor that we have. Now, when we start thinking, well, it's uh, you know, I, I can do it. No, you have to think I can do it through him. See, it's him. You know, uh, this armor, it'll strengthen you. It'll make you to where you can stand. Uh, you know, you, uh, you know, I won't be honest with you. It's not fun to be uh, basically an outcast. But I want to say this. If people know you're a Christian at work, you're not going to be buddies with everybody. You're not going to be popular. They're not going to be asking you for your phone number unless they want something. My wife works, and they're all Catholic. They don't talk to her much. They don't talk to her much. She basically works by herself. I said, don't worry about it. I said, the only thing they got we want is their money. <laughs> huh? I'm, you know, I said, when they quit paying me, they won't see me no more. I'm going to tell you something, folks. It takes some backbone to go to a place and work and knowing. I've got a fellow right now, he's hated me. He hates my guts. I ain't done a thing to this guy. Now that I know how he feels, just to make him mad, I talk to him and say hi to him. And he drops his head and acts like if I could, I, I would, like, he <laughs> You know, if you put an armor on, there's going to be suffering. You know, uh, what really insults me about our government is that the thousands of our men and women that have died so that we could live in America, and this bozo we've got in the office is doing everything he can uh, to destroy this great country. The people that have come back from these different wars that have been burnt half alive, that have mental issues, that have lost limbs, that is a disgrace that our government does the things that they do. I want to tell you something. When you're in a battle, there's going to be suffering. Let me read you this verse. 1 Peter 2.21 says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You know, I'm going to say this. You're not going to be a Christian and not suffer. You know, you go to family reunion, you ain't going to be the most popular person there. That's just the way it is. You know, just... How you doing? Glad to see you. <laughs> I know you don't want me here, but I'm here anyway. <laughs> uh, see, it's suffering. You know, you can act like it don't bother you, but it does bother. I said the last time I preached, the, the old saying is, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never 
hurt me. That's a lie. Words hurt. But you know what? I've got this armor on. And by the grace of God, I'm going to keep on. I look in verse 11. I don't want to go too much. It says, Put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see the purpose of our armor. See, you'll never make it standing under your own strength. See, you'll get weary and faint. But see, you have to realize, you know the worst part of my life is waiting. You have a situation come and you don't know what's going to happen. You know. But you, fellas, you ought to get used to waiting because if you're married, you get to wait a lot. It's just waiting. So where, 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 should, where are you at? I'm, I'm over here on the couch. I'm waiting. They're getting everything, all whatever they do, they do it. It takes them... Uh, not talking bad I'm just saying you just have to wait you know you could, but anywho <laughs> the problems that we face for me if if we could get the answers quickly it would be so much easier but you know what God sometimes it might be five years before he gives an answer you know why because are you going to stand with having this problem, whatever it might be, family, financial? There are many problems, you know. But the thing that he's going to say, I'm going to let them go through this. And you, you know, you ever talk to God? I, I've got a grandson right now that bless his heart. Uh, he's, he's shacked up with this little girl. I thought of him when Brother Doug said this the other day when he was talking to these young boys. He said that the devil will send you a girl. That's what he did. you know. And I keep telling him, and my wife does, you're just spinning your wheels. He said, we're making it. I said, you ain't making it. I said, if you're making it, why are you always calling me and wanting money? <laughs> I'm looking at Ron and I'm just dying laughing I'm thinking this guy's he's touched in the head <laughs> he's, he's touched <laughs> you know I'm making it I said no I'm making it <laughs> you little nerd <laughs> uh, but you know uh, it's a rough situation for me. I don't like it. But you know what? From the time that boy was born, I'd take him in my office and read to him out of the Bible. And when, I, when Rhonda tells him, you know, you ain't going nowhere doing that, I know, Memo. Send me $10. <laughs> That's, I just, yeah. It don't necessarily happen like that, but it does happen. But I'm just saying... See, if you, watch, if you don't watch, that stuff right there gets you to where you're so discouraged you don't want to go on. But you know what? This God I serve, He's greater than that. I may not live long enough to see this kid get saved, but I'll tell you what I do have. I have a promise from God. You know, this promise happened to me up on I-71. I was driving by, they call it the beach up there, and I was frustrated. And God says, do you want me to save Austin? I said, yes. Well, why don't you ask? And I did. And he said, I'll do it. So you know what I know? I may be dead in heaven, but God won't lie. He ain't going to lie. Now, it looks gloomy and doomy, but see, this armor I got tells me, you just keep waiting. Just keep waiting. Just keep living right. Just keep doing right. God will take care of it. You know, this armor, another purpose that it has is that you can recognize the works of Satan. Do you know 
People in the world, Brother Brian, they don't have a clue what's going on. They don't know what's happening. All they think about is they've heard this all the life, the end of time is coming. It is not. It is, but it ain't coming right now. Huh? They don't have a clue. They don't realize that if, if they live, they're going to go through a seven-year tribulation period that's going to basically be the worst time that's ever been on planet Earth. And they're going to be right here in the center of it. You know what I know? I know I won't be here. Hmm? I know that it's the way it is because God foreordained it to be that way. Because the reason He foreordained it to be that way was because He knew that man at the end would basically turn their back on Him. And that's what they're doing. They're turning their back. Uh, even the church fell into it. When the uh, COVID come, they folded like a deck of cards. Some of these church, they have closed and some of them have lost a third of their members. Some of them a half of their members. And now every time somebody sneezes, half the church gets up and runs out. Huh? Yeah. Amen. Huh? You say you got a fever. You need to stay home. I stayed home every time I felt sick. I'd never go to work because the thought of work makes me sick. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, we need to recognize. He said, the Bible says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. You know, all this stuff is a bunch of foolishness. What we're doing here, Brother Donald, is a waste of time. This is, a, this is the most blessed time of your life is to be here. Amen. This is better than being at work. Right. Amen. Amen. This is better than any outing you could go to. Anything that you enjoy doing, this is more profitable than any of that. You say, I ain't learning nothing. Well, you need to listen then. Huh? Huh? What I'm trying to tell you is this armor that we have, it, it, it'll let you recognize Satan is at work right now more than I believe ever in my lifetime. He's doing more. Uh, Brother Ray, he's done more in the last two years than he did prior to the, you know, he did. He's doing more. And if you can't see that and being a child of God, you need, to, you need help. I'm telling you, he's, 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 he's strongly... I mean, it's just, it's just like God is just unfolding it right in front of us. <clears throat> People amaze me because you know what they're doing? They still think that my 401k is going to come back and I'm going to really have it good. Wrong. I got good news for you. Wrong. <laughs> it ain't. Why? Because God told us it was going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. <laughs> that's, that's good news. Now, you know, one thing about armor is that it's personal. Now, when you was in the armed services, you didn't wear your buddy's uniform, did you? You had your own, right? You, you had your own. You know, you, I can't, I can't, I can't put your armor on you. You have to do it. Wouldn't it be a shame we got grown men going out to fight and they had to bring their mothers in to dress them? <laughs> You're in the army and your wife has to come over and put your clothes on because you don't know how. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. That's why you've got to do this. See, this thing is left up to you. You are as spiritual, I'm as spiritual as I want to be. You're as excited about being a child of God as you want to be. Right, amen. Because I can't make you... 
It wouldn't matter if they if Jesus come in here. It wouldn't change. Because that's left up to you. You've got to do that. You have to, you have to forsake all this. It's, it's, it's a marriage. When I got married, forsaking all others, that means I didn't know go home with no other women. <laughs> I've been 43 years, every day, every night. She sees me coming and locks the door. <laughs> but I fooled her. I got a key. <laughs> Do you know another thing about this armor is because, you know, there was things in your armed army services that you, you know that I don't know. Because I wasn't there. You, re you know what we do? We receive instructions. That's why it's important that you be at church. That's why it's important you be at Sunday school. That's why it's important you listen. Huh? And that's important why you go home and read this. You know. Now, I'm, if my wife buys anything that has to be put together... I look at the picture. I ain't, I ain't reading all them instructions. I ain't got time for all that. Until then. And then you have to get the old instructions out. And another one of those things we don't do that before church because it wouldn't work out well. And I know I'm the only one that does that. But, but this Bible right here um, I think it was Brother James we were talking a couple of weeks ago before church. And he said, I don't understand why people think that they can work and earn being saved when the Bible says it's not of works. <laughs> and you know, how do you, get, how do you come up thinking you can do something? Because we have the instruction book right here. When it says not of works, I mean, you don't, you don't need... A Noah Webster what dictionary to figure out not of works. But yet there's more people believing in works than they are grace. Right. Hmm? But we've got a book right here that tells us. Right. You know, you know, so people say, Well, I tell you what, I, I don't believe he's saved because he don't go to church. Well, that ain't what the Bible says. I don't like that. I think there's something wrong, but it bothers me when people don't like church because you ought to. Sure. But it says it's of grace. If a person truly accepted the Lord, it's not of works. But I don't. I, it bothers me that people don't want to go to church. Now, I got to hurry. Now, the, the another thing about this, and I'll close with this, is is this armor is for your protection. See, I want to tell you something. Let me say this to you folks. You go to church long enough, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. But see, that's why you have to have this on. Look, look at what he says. He, he says, verse 14, having your loins girt about with truth. Right at the get-go, you know what he says? You need to know the truth. You know why? Because the Bible says the truth will set you free. You need to know the truth about this book. You need to know what this book says about everything. Why? Why? How you get saved? You know, even how are you justified? You need to know that. You need to know that because it's truth. Because a lot of people, they're, when they're real high, they're saved. But when they're real low, they're lost. That's not true. Because the truth says, you know, I'm justified by faith. I don't quit believing God. No matter what, I don't quit believing Him. Hmm? Look at the next thing. He said, having your uh, breastplate of righteousness. See, he said, he, he's got your loins girt about. Now, here's, here's the picture Paul's trying to paint to you. Uh, is that these soldiers, they wore these robes and had this girdle, and when it come time to run, they'd gather that up and shove it down in that 
and that belt so they could run. You know, you say, well, I ain't going to run. You're going to get killed. Sometimes you've got to run. Huh? So he's telling us, you know, we need, uh, we, we need to, to have this truth, but we need to have righteousness. And our righteousness is filthy rags, but the righteousness that God gives us, uh, you know, you know what that is? We'll stand and say, you know what, I ain't nothing, but thank God what I am. I am by His grace. Amen. Uh, then what I think is amazing is that He gives us shoes, the gospel of peace. You know, most people go to war, they go to kill. God goes to capture. Now, here's another thing about their apparel and the Roman soldiers. They would take their sandals and they would drive little tacks down through and they would stick out about an eighth to a quarter of an inch so that when they got out on the field, they, could, they didn't slide. You don't want to be in battle with a sword and have some guy seven foot tall coming after you and you fall down. The end ain't going to be in your favor. So he says, you know what you need to do? You need to have your feet shod with the gospel. But one, you know what? He says, you know what? You need to have the shield of faith. Right. See, their shield, they could stand down behind it, squat down behind it and cover themselves. It takes a lot of faith. You, you know, God asks you to believe a lot of things that's hard to believe. You know, one of the things about being a child of God is believing the things that are unbelievable. Right. Who could believe in our natural state that a, that a virgin could give birth. <laughs> That's unbelievable. But by faith you can believe that. I believe it because the Bible says it. Then he says, having a helmet of salvation. You need to have your... I, I'm, Brother Ray, I've never in my lifetime seen so many people being attacked in their minds. Sure. Huh? Yeah. Paul said in the book, book of, of Philippians, he said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. You know what you got to do? Quit paying attention to news. Amen. News will give you the blues. Right. This Bible is true. Right. Don't be, you need to have your mind protected. You know, you can't put, see, if you ever noticed this, when I was a kid, they never did this. Everywhere you go, they play music. You know why? Get that kind of music in your head. Huh? You go to Walmart to buy uh, a battery and you come out singing Waylon Jennings. I know some of y'all don't know that, but that's going back before most of y'all's time. But I'm just saying, why is that? That's not of God. Huh? You go to Walmart and you see these people, ain't got enough character, they wear their jammies to, to Walmart. I like to take them out by the dumpster and just take my belt off to them huh that's called character sure. they don't have any mm. <laughs> I gotta hurry last thing he says sword of the spirit which is the word of God so you're gonna have to have something to lop off what the devil says huh you're gonna have to have something to cut down all the stuff that comes your way you say, well, boy, I tell you, it sounds to me like we're in a battle. You're getting it. Yeah. This, I mean, it's, it's rough out there. Sure you know, and the devil, he'll bring it in here if you don't, let, if you don't watch. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of teaching Sunday school. I hope it's been a help to these folks. God bless, bless Brother Mike as he preaches to us. Lord, let him preach like he's never preached before. God, if somebody's here lost, please, please, Lord, save them. Lord, help us to do nothing. Nothing, Lord, that would cause you not to be able to do what you want to do today. And we'll ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name, and ask you to help Brother Doug and his family. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.